Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV. We're in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. Uh, I'm joined by Dave Caldwell. How are you, mate? You cold? Mate, it's absolutely freezing here. I'm in Saudi Arabia and it's freezing. Can't believe it. And it started raining earlier as well. Yeah. The last time I was here in Saudi, was it four years ago, AJ Ruiz? Pissed it down rain. I turn up today, what happened? It pissed it down. Luckily it was on for about 10 minutes. Well, listen, a couple of days, I'm sure the weather's going to hold out. What's that? Oh, no, not that. What's that? That is Wall Street Memes Casino, an online casino. Plug the sponsorship. What's wrong with that? Do you want to plug anything quickly? No, it's all right. Undisputed. (laughs) Um, What did you make of that press conference? Uh, It was interesting. Do you know what? I could could listen to Ngannou speak all day. I, I love his attitude. Nothing ruffles him. You know, nothing ruffles him. There was a question about the 10 rounds. Um, um, w- w- you know, he, he's going to struggle to do the 10 rounds. And a lot of fighters, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of men, when somebody questions you, you bite back or you try and defend yourself. He, he wasn't interested in that. It was like, yeah, 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 I, str- I struggled to do 10 rounds. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. I was tired after eight, blah, blah, You can't do 10 rounds except for Yeah, you. do you know what I mean? And I, I love that. It's just, you know what that is? That's inner confidence that he's got in him. And I just love that. Uh, that attitude is wicked. And, you know, he talks about, uh, he's, he's, you know, as long as he does his best, then he can't control the outcomes, he can't control this, can't control that. As long as he knows that, as long as he does his best, he tries his best, he gives his best every day, and that's all he, he's bothered about. And that, that attitude, I think, I think it's brilliant. Speaking to Tyson Fury earlier, he said something interesting, which is quite probably obvious, that we still don't know a lot about Francis Ngannou. We've seen an underpar Tyson Fury, I think that's fair to say, in that fight. Um, did it flatter Ngannou? That might be harsh to say that but we, we were only going from really that fight because prior to that I remember like people seeing him on the pads he was getting slated it was like a mismatch even Hearn said that this was a mismatch etc etc I did, so, yeah. I did. I, before, before that fight I saw that clipper him on the pads with Mike Tyson and I was like oh my god I genuinely thought Fury can go in there and just do whatever he wants to do do a bit of rope a door play about and, and, he'll, and he'll, he'll stop him whenever he wants to stop him and obviously, you know, what happened, happened. But that's all done now. But what you've got to understand is that regardless of a bit of fury taking him lightly, you know, and, and, and Ngannou over, you know, being better than what we thought, he shaped up really well. He knew what he was doing in there. He never pressed the panic button once. He picked his moments. Um, he controlled the pace really, really well. Um, and he's now got that experience. He's now got... So you know when he dropped him in the third round and he don't put his foot down on the pedal? Is that because he thought, well, it's round three, round 10 is all the way there. I've only ever done five rounds in my life. There's a long way to that finishing line. And when there's a long way to the finish line, you, you hold it back a little bit. Had that been in round eight or something, would he have put the foot down on the pedal and gone for it? Now he's done the 10 rounds. He hasn't got that question mark on, you know, can I do 10 rounds? Not that you doubt it, it's just not that, that unknown factor. And now he's done that 10 rounds, plus the experience of boxing in there with somebody as clever as Fury, and now the another training camp where he's getting better at boxing, then I expect a better version of, of Ngannou, and that makes for a more exciting fight. Um, the question that keeps coming up is, is the method of win. Does, or will AJ knock out Ngannou? This is quite a split opinion, some people don't believe that AJ will and some people are convinced he will. Does he need to knock him out with why the fight's taking place off the back of the Fury fight? Obviously he doesn't need to but it's a statement isn't it? It's a statement and you know when you, you, you've got a, a big rival you always want to have one up on your rival don't you? And he wants to go in whether he wants to say it or not I would imagine he'd want to go in there and, and put in a better performance than what Tyson Fury did. Um, but the most important thing is that he don't get knocked out. Listen, he might go in, get get hit on the chest with a shot and think, fuck that, he can punch. Makes him be a little bit more smarter than, okay, let's let's be smart here and just, just get a win. Or he might not think anything of that, go full on an offensive, sharp, 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 see how you deal with me. 
because when you look at when Fury went at Ngannou, his defence was stepping back, leaning back, dropping his left arm and, and having a big gap straight through the middle. Maybe AJ is looking at capitalising on that. So I don't know. I don't know. As long as, long as he wins, that's all he's going to he's going to be bothered about ultimately. But I do fancy he'd want to he'd want to put on a, a bit of a statement. Um, Tyson Fury in attendance today. Obviously, uh, his cut still healing. Um, that fight's going to quickly approach after this this weekend. But I mean, he's probably sitting there, kind of semi relaxed today. He's obviously, the, yeah, the pressure is off him for this week, if, if you like. Obviously, we know he's uh, still in a camp um, over in Jeddah. But yeah, I mean, he's probably looking at just like you two kind of battle it out, and we'll see what happens after that. Yeah, he's having fun. I mean, he had a bit of back and forth and sat there on the front row. He's just there as, as, as having a bit of a laugh today, um, enjoying what's going off. And I would imagine it. it I would imagine he'd want AJ to win because I'm sure he, he wants that fight himself. You know, Joshua versus Fury. I'm sure he wants to be in the biggest, biggest fight available out there. So, you know, he probably don't want to upset or wind AJ up that much. And he'll probably be a little bit satisfied that he's, he's had a bit of back and forth to Angano rather than rather than AJ because he'll probably want AJ to win so they can get it on themselves. This is going to be like a a weird week, but it's like it's a bit surreal still being here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, we're in a little amphitheater and the setup, the production, everything for a press conference is unbelievable. Um, it's just everything's big everything's done and do you know what i find really really mad is i've watched it on obviously on on, on all the footage that's been coming out yeah the, the um you turn up here you're in an amphitheater productions values are off the scale for a press conference you know but i think the most surreal thing for me is i've watched the build-up all the footage you know for the last fight this fight last few last couple of fights over here and you're seeing eddie and frank working together the teams working together and everything but to see it in person, see all the factions moving together to, to combine to make it all work, it's wicked, but it's weird. It's, it's just, it just doesn't seem normal because for years and years and years we've seen like how, how apart everybody is. Now everybody's pulled together. I think it's great for the sport and, and I think it means that we're going to get a lot more big nights going forward. Yeah, have you seen Froch's latest comments regarding no, Joshua? No, what's he been up to now? Oh, he's making headlines. Froch on fighting, I think it is. It's a good channel, I like it. Yeah. Um, like if he was to lose, that would be kind of curtains over for, for Joshua's career. We say that about a lot of fighters. Um, I don't think I don't think AJ has to I don't think he cares for the opinions of any of us anymore. I think whatever he's done throughout his career he's always been, you know, criticised, either either side. Um, I think it's more a case of what does it do to his mentality if he was to be be beaten by a guy that's had one fight and lost it going in. That's more more important. And I understand where Carl's going from that. If he's saying that, it'd be more a case of how would he recover from that from a conference point of view with the goals that he's got left in the game. Um, so quite possibly that that could be it. But I don't know. You know, that's something for for Anthony Joshua to decide, not any of us. Dave Paul, well, thank you very much for your patience today. Uh, we look forward to Friday night knockout chaos. I mean, yeah, just who knows what's going to happen. And there's some great fights in there, like obviously Parker and Zhang, and there's Paul Vargas as well. Paul Vargas. There's a lot of good fights on the bill, so we'll look forward to it. Okay, see you then. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.